If you took a tour of the average modern home, you would find one of these in nearly every single room. In fact, I think it could be argued that the electric motor is the most widely used device in the world. Starting in the bathroom, we would find the exhaust vent in the ceiling. Walk into any bedroom and you're gonna find a ceiling fan or possibly box fans in the window or on the floor. If you have a washer and dryer, that's two more right there. But in the kitchen is where you're gonna find a mother load. We're talking about garbage disposal, dishwasher, your microwave has two of them, your refrigerator has one. These are all motors that we found before we even leave our homes. But the induction motor in particular, which is what this guy comes from, is the one that I find most intriguing. This guy right here is what converts the electricity from your wall into mechanical motion. For example, spinning your clothes or spinning your ceiling fan. And it does so with no wires touching it. It's really quite fascinating. It was invented by Nikola Tesla, probably the most prolific inventor of all time, but it was the induction motor, this guy, that got him inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Today we're gonna to build ourselves a simple model to explain how this guy works, because it's really quite fascinating. And we'll also talk about why this is considered to be one of the top 10 inventions of all time. Let's get started. The topic for today's video was actually inspired by a new series coming out on the History Channel. But I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. Before we can talk about what makes Tesla's invention so incredible, we should first talk about how we're gonna take electricity and turn it into mechanical motion. When you run electricity through a wire, there's a magnetic field produced around the wire. In fact, that magnetic field has a north and a south pole. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna use this compass that I have laying on my workbench here. North is directly behind me, and this wire currently is connected to a circuit that is off. If I turn the power on, and apply some voltage, you'll see that the compass needle is starting to turn to align itself with the magnetic field of the wire. That's because that magnet is a whole lot closer than the Earth's magnetic field. When I turn the power off, it goes back to the Earth's magnetic field. It gets even better though. If you take the wire and coil it up all in the same direction, the strength of the magnetic field increases. And if you take a piece of iron and shove it in the middle, that also increases the magnetic field. To illustrate how this works, I've taken this transformer out of a microwave literally just a few minutes ago. What's important to us is that it's a piece of iron with two coils of wire inside of it. The one on this side is wrapped way more than this side, so we're going to use this one. And if we put electricity through it, we ought to be able to turn this thing into a magnet. So right now, it's not magnetic, right? But we put power on it. Uh, hmm. It helps to plug it in. One second. It's on, and now let's start to run some current through it. Okay, that's definitely pulling on it now. And let's put a little more. Yeah. Okay, we have an electromagnet. Turn it off, and uh, as you can see, it's not magnetic anymore. Turn it back on. Power off. No magnetic field. So now we ought to be pretty comfortable with the idea that if we run electricity through a wire, we're going to get a magnetic field around the wire. And that magnetic field gets stronger if you coil the wire up. This also works in reverse. If we move a magnet over a wire, we get electricity. Let me show you. This is just a stack of ceramic magnets, and as you can see, as I move it closer to the coil, I'm starting to read a voltage on my multimeter. And that's because electricity is actually starting to flow through this top coil here. If I move it a little faster and a little closer, I actually get higher voltages, meaning that more electricity is flowing. But there's one more thing you wanna know before we move away from this, is if the magnet is still, there's no voltage. There has to be relative motion between the magnet and the coil of wire. As long as I'm inputting some motion, I'm gonna get a voltage there. All right, we've gone one step further. Electricity can produce a magnetic field. A magnetic field can produce electricity as long as there's relative motion between the two. Here's where things get interesting. Every kid who's ever played with a magnet knows that they can push on each other without touching each other, right? That magnetic field is almost like a force field around a magnet. And if we can use one magnet to push on another magnet, then we might be able to create some motion. So if we want to make something spin with magnets, we could take a permanent magnet 
and mount it to something that can pivot and then move a magnet around it. So this is already starting to look like a motor, right? Okay, so this is a good start, but the problem is we have to move the magnet on the outside, which is pretty wasteful, right? That'd be a terrible motor. What if this magnet could stay still and we could just change the pole? We could also make the magnet on the inside move. Tesla wanted to design a motor using purely electromagnets and the magnet on the inside, he wanted to electrify wirelessly. And that's the part that gets really impressive. Let me show you how he did that. Both copper and aluminum are extremely good conductors of electricity, but neither one of them is magnetic. In fact, I've got a magnet right here, and you can see while it's attracted to my table, it's not showing any attraction at all to the copper or the aluminum. But it was well known in Tesla's day that if a magnetic field was moving past a conductor, like copper or aluminum, it would tend to drag the copper or aluminum with it. One of my favorite examples of this is just using a copper pipe and a small magnet. I'm gonna use my phone to give you another perspective here and uh, possibly sacrifice my camera for science. All right, here we go. Dropping the magnet inside the copper. And as you can see, the magnet falls significantly slower than you would expect. If you drop it the same distance in free space, it's pretty much instant, right? Well, what's happening is pretty fascinating. As the magnet falls down the copper tube, electricity is starting to flow in the copper because of the moving of the magnetic field. Now that there's electricity flowing in the copper tube, the copper tube becomes an electromagnet and it starts pushing back against the magnet that's falling inside of it. It's really quite amazing. You might even think of it as the copper tube literally pulling up on the magnet as gravity was pulling down, causing that nice slow descent. Tesla took that linear movement and turned it into a rotary movement. Let me show you. So here we have one more demo and this should seal the deal for you. Right now my heart rate is actually picking up because this is truly, truly exciting to me. Even though I understand how it works, I'm still fascinated by it. Okay, so here's what we're building. This is an aluminum disc hot glued to a bearing, so nothing special. Here we have some magnets, North Pole, South Pole, North Pole, South Pole, also hot glued to a piece of acrylic, hot glued to a bearing, just so that they're free to spin. There's a nut keeping these guys from touching, and then I just made some plastic spacers to make sure that they're not rubbing directly on the nut. Ready for this? All right, I'm gonna spin the magnetic field and it's dragging the aluminum disc with it. Look, they're not touching. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I could do this all day. Now we're using permanent magnets here, but electromagnets are completely scalable. So the bigger we make the stator on the outside of the motor, the stronger and more powerful the motor can be. From little tiny motors like what I showed you earlier, all the way up to the biggest industrial machinery that you can imagine can be run with induction motors. Really, really quite amazing what Tesla did. But it gets even better. Because you don't have to connect wires to the spinning part of the motor, you don't have a stationary object constantly rubbing against a moving object. So there's much, much less friction. Induction motors can run for decades without giving you a problem. This is why induction motors are used in so many applications, especially applications where the thing has to run for many years without any maintenance, like the air conditioning unit in your house. And finally, we can look at a modern day induction motor. This design hasn't changed very much since the 1880s when Tesla originally designed this guy. Now, no doubt, there's been some changes. For example, Tesla's design was a two-phase motor instead of three, and there's a whole bunch of other nerdy details that I'm leaving out but essentially this is the same principle and the same type of functionality. And that to me is pretty cool. So if you look at this little bitty one that I'm showing you, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of coils of wire going all the way around. And when you scale this up, it's exactly the same. Each of these coils is like an individual magnet. And if you remember what I said before, if you flip the pole over, you can actually push the magnet on the inside. In our case, because it's an electromagnet, we can switch the direction that the electricity is flowing through the wire and that flips the poles of the magnet. The North Pole becomes South Pole. 
Again, amazing. If you flip the pole of each of these magnets one after the other, you get a rotating magnetic field, which will drag the rotor with it, giving you rotational power. Phenomenal engineering. I wanna make sure you understand how much this invention infects your daily life. Nearly everything that's hardwired in your house and moves is run by an induction motor. Your air conditioning unit is, and many of the things that I mentioned earlier in this video, like ceiling fans, are all induction motors. I just did a quick walk around of my shop and pretty much every power tool has an induction motor on it. In fact, I wanna challenge you to take a tour of your house and count how many electric motors you interact with on a daily basis. I think you're gonna be astonished and I'd love to see some of those numbers in the comment section. Bonus points if you can distinguish whether it's an induction motor or another type. Now we're just scratching the surface on how induction motors work and we haven't talked about any of the other motor types. But fortunately, I've made a whole series of videos, a beginner series, where I talk about the different motor types, how they work, and I go through each element step by step. I think you'll really enjoy that series if you wanna go deeper. I'm really excited about this video. Thank you to the History Channel for collaborating with me on this, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.